roof over their heads for shelter, but this Polk City man is using his roof to make phone calls. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kevin Cooney. And I'm Jeanette Trumpeter. The summer strike at U.S. West has been over nearly two months, but a Polk City man says he is still waiting for phone service. News Channel East Brian Polson joins us now with more on the story. And Brian, why has this gentleman been waiting so long? Well, you know, that's a question he has asked U.S. West, <laughs> one he's asking the Iowa Utilities Board and his attorney. In fact, you might say Conkle is going through the roof for phone service. Irvin Conkle is three months out of the Army Reserve, but he still straps on his black boots several times a day. He grabs his communication device and makes a crucial climb to the roof of his house just to make a phone call. Ah, this is insane. You see, Polk City doesn't have a cell tower either, so Conkle needs to get up high to get a signal. I grab a stepladder and come up on the roof and I can get a good signal sometimes and I can complete a conversation. There is a landline that comes into Irvin Conkle's house, but it's not on and it hasn't been since he moved here, just two days before the U.S. West strike. It was supposed to be done right away, but since the strike hit, then they told us it would be 30 days. It's been two months and Conkle is still waiting because U.S. West is out of phone lines in Polk City. Last line in the area, which was for this house, was given to a new house down the street. A U.S. West spokeswoman says the strike delayed plans to increase capacity, a project that's almost finished now. So in other words, we'll have more lines to be able to serve additional and new customers. While the company installs its special equipment, Conkle will keep using his a trusty wooden stepladder. You know, whatever I have to do, I have to do. Now, U.S. West says the new phone lines in the Polk City area should be available by early next week, and U.S. West says it will be reimbursing Irvin Cockle for all the cell phone calls he's made. He gets its company policy, in fact, gets 105 bucks for the first month he was without service and $85, I believe, something like that for every month thereafter. And, of course, I'm sure they're... Hoping he doesn't slip and fall. <laughs> yeah, that could be a, a hefty bill. Gives a whole new meeting to calling on high. Huh? Exactly. Thanks, Brian. Smoke towered over Des Moines' north side after a fire broke out in a Sailor Township construction equipment business this afternoon. It all happened at 5137 Northwest 2nd Avenue, just north of I-8035. The fire broke out in a service garage at the Aggregate Equipment and Supply Company. By the time firefighters from three departments got to the scene, it had burned through most of the shop company's service manager says he believes the fire started in a wash bay and then spread to some flammable liquids. And I just got a word that the building was on fire, got up, made sure everybody was out of it. It was a pretty quick fire. No one was injured in the fire. The garage and most of the rental equipment inside destroyed. Well, what would you do if you pulled the plug to Big Creek Lake and then you couldn't get it closed again? That's the problem, believe it or not, facing the Army Corps of Engineers. Friday, a test on a gate that controls the water output failed. And now they can't figure out how to get that gate closed. News Channel 8's Steve Oswalt brought us the first information on this story today, live at noon. And Steve, tonight, any reason to be concerned? No big reason at this point, Jeanette, although that could change, I suppose. About 50,000 gallons of water is currently leaking out of Big Creek Lake every minute right now. And that's a whole lot more than normal. It's a whole lot more than they would like. Until they can get it stopped, the state says it won't know the actual impact on fishing. The other concern is flooding. You're about to see what they're doing to prevent that. Beneath all of this fall beauty is a growing beast. This is the creek that gives Big Creek its name. And Big Creek is much bigger than usual because of all that extra water flowing into it. To keep Polk City from being flooded, they're pumping extra water from this creek into Cedarville Lake. This is the top of the gate that's stuck some 40 feet below. You can't see much, can you? No. The normal opening on it is about uh, around two tenths is what we keep it at all the time. And it's stuck at about five. Since Friday, the lake level has gone down one foot. Today, they brought in some underwater camera gear to find out what's going on. The divers got it in their truck. Man, that water is rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. so You're off of it, Tom. Hey, get your back on it. But we We're seem off. to be getting a pretty good picture. The problem is there's so much turbulence down with the water moving that it's hard to uh, to control the angle of the camera. Keep working down. You're almost to a knuckle. That's a knuckle or a guide. There could be a piece of anchor in there. It could be that the gate got misaligned. 
Now, late this afternoon, a possible solution to this Big Creek problem. With the help of that television camera, they found a rope leading out of the opening to the gate. At the end of that rope, they think they might find a boat anchor. The water is still leaking, though, tonight, and they hope to hook something onto that rope tomorrow morning and pull it up to see if they've found the problem, which they think might be that boat anchor. And if it is an anchor, how do they get that anchor out? That is the next problem, isn't it? If they can pull the anchor up high enough, then, to close the gate and keep the water from coming out of the lake, then they can get a diver down there to get it untangled and out of the way. Right now, the water, as you might guess, is simply moving simply too fast to be safe for a diver to be down there. Tricky task. Thanks, Steve. Stay tuned. A judge today ordered a Fort Dodge company to stop accepting old tires. It was back in August that we told you that Don Grell and his company, Dodger Enterprise, had collected nearly one half million tires. The State Department of Natural Resources issued uh, Grell a permit for only 40,000, and the judge issued a temporary injunction stopping him from collecting any more tires. Grell says, however, the DNR changed the rules on him. He is vowing to take his fight all the way to the Supreme Court. Iowans are apparently getting the message to use caution when going through a railroad crossing. According to the State Department of Transportation, there has been only one deadly accident at a railroad crossing this year. Just last year, there were 85 collisions at Iowa crossings. In 1990, there were 180. The DOT says better signals, signs, and pavement mark markings, as well as public safety campaigns like Operation Lifesaver, are the reasons for the drop in accidents. A woman who was nearly beaten to death in Prospect Park recently has now been released from a Des Moines hospital. A passerby found Robin Columbus on September 22nd. Doctors say both legs and many facial bones had been broken. Des Moines police arrested 18-year-old Jeffrey DeMond Grafton for Columbus's beating, and he has since been charged with attempted murder. If Mid-American Energy has its way, your power bill will soon be going up. Mid-American wants a 4.5% increase in the price of natural gas. That would mean an extra 2.5 bucks to the average monthly bill here in central Iowa. Mid-American says it needs the money to pay for a new customer service system and other improvements. The increase must still be approved by the Iowa Utilities Board before it can go into effect. If there's going to be any sort of an increase in your power bill these days, it probably wouldn't have much of a net increase, John, because temperatures have just been yeah. nice and warm out there. Yeah, it's pretty mild during the day, and overnight lows have not been bad either. In fact, last night just 62 for the overnight temp due to the clouds and moisture in the air. Let's take a look at live Super Doppler right now, and no showers left in Iowa. We continue to paint some rain down across northern Missouri from around the Kirksville area on to the south and east toward Quincy. Let's take a look at our conditions for tonight. Cloudy skies, temperatures in the mid-50s for tomorrow. Looks like by afternoon, chance for showers, maybe a thunderstorm again, and highs remaining not bad in the mid to upper 60s. We hope they'll stick around. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John. Still to come tonight on News Channel 8 at 6. Still don't have that Halloween costume? Never fear. I'm Erin Moody. We'll show you where to find one next in a live report. And Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller heads to Washington to do battle with software giant Microsoft. Those stories and more just ahead. The big night is creeping up on us. Do you have your costume yet? Halloween has become one of the biggest events of the year. As a matter of fact, retailers say it ranks right behind Christmas for sales. So what are people spending the bulk of their money on? Costumes, of course. Here's Seattle Lace Aaron Moody joins us live now. And can we still find a get up for this weekend, Aaron? You sure can, Kevin, especially if you come here to the theatrical shop in Valley Junction. If you're looking for grotesque, they have it or angelic. We're going to give you a live look now at people doing their shopping. You can see quite a crowd gathered in the downstairs of the theatrical shop here. This is the place to find those costumes for people of all ages, from the very, very young to uh, the old. They're making their last minute dash to find their character of choice. People even looking for infant costumes today. There are also some unusual characters to be, to be found. South Park kids are here along with old favorites. The most popular costumes this year, fairy tale characters like Tinkerbell and Peter Pan, or Robin Hood and Maid Marian. Other top sellers include anything from the 20s, which retailers attribute to the swing craze. Managers here at the theatrical shop say Halloween is their Christmas, with this year being more hectic than ever because of the holiday falling on a Saturday. Oh, we have been just swamped. Open the door at 9 o'clock, and we've got dozens of people standing outside the door waiting for us. It's like we can't even catch our breath the first thing in the morning. And we've just been swamped all day. Managers here say that even though sales have been hectic, 
they still have plenty of costumes for you to rent or buy. And for those of you that are big time procrastinators like me, the theatrical shop is open until 9 o'clock p.m. on Friday and even until 6 p.m. on Saturday if you wait till the very last minute. So you got a lunch hour coming up here. You yeah, got time to go out there. If you have time, it's pretty crowded, so you want right. to plan ahead a little bit. Thanks, Aaron. Uh huh. First Lady Hillary Clinton will be in Des Moines this weekend, but not to trick-or-treat for Halloween. She'll be in town to campaign for Iowa Democratic candidate for governor, Tom Vilsack. A rally and a fundraiser will be held Saturday afternoon at the Des Moines Convention Center. Another Iowa Democrat, Attorney General Tom Miller in Washington this week, trying to help prove Microsoft illegally tried to force its competition out of the computer software market. The Justice Department is claiming that Microsoft tried to talk Netscape into dividing up the web browser market. Netscape says uh, that when they refused, Microsoft used its Windows operating system to try and push them out of the marketplace. Iowa's Attorney General says the lawsuit was filed to try and keep the computer industry competitive. This is consumer protection. That's what antitrust is all about. Consumers are the ones that are buying these computers. And consumers are the ones that need competition. Competition produces for consumers lower prices, better service, better quality, and more innovation. And every consumer in the nation has an interest in that, in my opinion. Microsoft, as you may have heard, is denying proposing to divide the web browser market with Netscape. They also deny doing anything to prevent Netscape's product from getting into the hands of consumers. Well, if you can keep your windows open without letting robbers in, tonight might be a good night to get some <laughs> fresh air, huh? Keep the guard dog uh, handy yeah. just in case you need uh. it. <laughs> no, the weather pretty decent, fairly mild overnight temps, not bad during the day either, and maybe a little rain in the forecast next. Meteorologist John McLaughlin has been awarded the American Meteorological Society Seal of Approval for Excellence in Television Weathercasting. Closed captioning of News Channel 8 is brought to you as a public service by KCCI and the cardiologist surgeons and staff at the Iowa Heart Center. Some rain across the area today. In fact, even a few thunderstorms with some very small hail earlier today up in north central Iowa. 61 the temperature with fair skies. The winds for the most part are calm right now. The dew point temperature is up there. Could see some fog tonight. 58 currently, 90% humidity. And the pressure rising, 3005. Another quick check on live Super Doppler radar. No rain in Iowa if you're headed down south into Missouri between Kirksville and Quincy, Illinois. A little bit of rain in the forecast down there. Let's head to the satellite picture, and we have a little different perspective on Hurricane Mitch. The main weather satellite across the eastern portion of the country has died, at least temporarily. So we're using the western satellite and looking back east. This is Mitch right there, and there's Belize. This is Honduras and the Yucatan Peninsula right in there. It's continuing to just kind of waggle around, no uh, real steering winds pushing it in any one certain direction. And probably will eventually make landfall as it kind of drifts very, very slowly off to the west. But wind's still up around 180 miles per hour, making this one of the strongest hurricanes over about the last 10 years. Closer to home, a little rain moved through Iowa today. Trough a little pressure right in this area. Moisture starting to flow back from the south to the north, out to the west of us. And it looks like by tomorrow afternoon and through the overnight hours, chance for some additional precipitation. Look at the satellite picture and we can see some cloudiness out to the west and a little bit of a break and then more clouds across Iowa today, some of that producing rain and you can see very nicely the curl around this little area of low pressure as that loops through right in there. Pretty good look at that and that's what caused the rain earlier today and also some thunder as we mentioned. So for the next 24 hours, winds are going to turn back to the south later tonight and tomorrow. We'll bring some moisture back up in here by afternoon, chance of showers into western Iowa. Then this area of rainfall will be spreading across the state for Wednesday night and early on Thursday. Quite a difference in temperatures. Warm front right in this area, you see to the south of its 70s up to the north, 50s and 60s. And that's what we had across much of Iowa today. Currently 61 Mason City, 64 and Fort Dodge. Clorinda, a little bit warmer, 72 the report out of there. 68 the high today, 62 this morning. And around central Iowa, 64 Marshalltown, Ames 65 right now. Down south around Sheraton, Knoxville. Temperatures at 66. Super Doppler forecast tonight shapes up like this for Des Moines, Central Iowa. Clouds with some fog, 55 degrees, light northeasterly winds tonight. For tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Winds become southeasterly. Could see some late day showers and 66. Tomorrow night, rain looks like a pretty good bed across the area. Should be somewhat scattered. 53 heading into Thursday. Could see some rain, especially during the morning. And temperatures on Thursday topping out about 64 degrees. Looks like kind of an on off chance of rain over the next several days as the weather pattern is a bit unsettled. And you'll notice cooler temperatures as we head 
toward the weekend down into the 50s. Actually, a little closer to what would be normal, I suppose. Yeah, we should be low 60s this time of year. All right. mm -hmm. Thank you, John. Ever since Iowa State had a couple of wins early in the season, Iowa uh, State's win over Iowa and Ball right. State, uh, things have kind of fallen on tough times. Though. Question is, can Coach McCartney and company turn things around when they go up against the Oklahoma Sooners this weekend? Heidi Soliday with that and more in sports. For up-to-the-minute weather information, day or night, call the News Channel 8 Super Doppler forecast at 262-7173. Sponsored by the Des Moines Area Ford Dealers. Hey, it's Tuesday. The coaches have a lot to say about upcoming games and a couple of important games. That's right. They Both teams need wins, that's for sure. The quarterback saga at Iowa has another chapter. It was written today. Hayden Fry says third-teamer Scott Mullen will start against Purdue. Mullen, who had his first career start for the Hawks last year at Wisconsin, played a bit in Iowa's loss to Arizona earlier this season. His starting role Saturday necessitated by injuries to Randy Reiners and Kyle McCann. He's a fine talent. He's a good athlete. He's got a good arm. Uh, he's mobile enough to, to do a good job. It's just having not played and been able to cope with the Big Ten defensive schemes and, and coverages that he's seen. Uh, he doesn't have any choice this week. He's got to come front and center. The Iowa-Purdue game kicks off just after noon on Saturday. The gambling scandal involving Northwestern Athletics may also involve a football game against the Iowa Hawkeyes in 1994. According to published reports in Chicago, the FBI is investigating possible point shaving by some Wildcat football players. One game being looked at, Northwestern at Iowa, 1994. Charges could be made next month. Some former Wildcat basketball players have already admitted to fixing games. Is Oklahoma beatable? That's what Iowa State is hoping as they prepare for the Sooners. Like Iowa State, Oklahoma is 2-5 and five and has not scored a win over a Big 12 team. A victory over the Sooners would end a four-game skid for Dan McCarney's team. It's coming out of a real, real tough weekend last week. I think our kids are uh, feel pretty good right now. Know that uh, uh, this is not the third-ranked team in the country, although they have a lot of good players and a very, very tough environment down there at Norman uh, to go into. But uh, I think they feel like uh, we're going to have a real good shot this week. The Cyclones meet Oklahoma at 1 o'clock Saturday in Norman. Chiefs quarterback Elvis Gerbach was grumbling following Kansas City's 20-13 loss to Pittsburgh Monday. Elvis didn't like his teammates' efforts. The guys who have to make plays on this team, I think, have to start realizing that they've got to make the play. The Tony Gonzalez's, the Tony Richardson, Danell Bennett, those guys just have to make plays. I mean, it just cannot be Andre Risen or Derek Alexander. It's got to be a combination of guys making plays. Also today in Kansas City, the NFL owners meeting. Among the topics being discussed, Houston or Los Angeles as an expansion city. Sounds kind of funny. For the second day, negotiations on both sides of the basketball pro-wise are meeting in New York. There are rumblings that the NBA owners are willing to back down a bit from their hard salary cap stance. The NBA's Board of Governors convenes tomorrow and is expected to sit down with several members of the Players Union. Last week, the league said if progress wasn't made to end the lockout this week, more games would be canceled. And here's your last look at this week's Pigskin Picks, $100 and perhaps a big screen TV riding on your choices. The games this week are Iowa State at Oklahoma, Kansas State at Kansas, Missouri at Texas Tech, Florida versus Georgia, Oregon at Arizona, and West Virginia at Virginia Tech. Send your picks and the total points to Heidi's Pigskin Picks, 888 9th Street, Des Moines, 50309. Postcards only accepted, or try the email route at pigpicks at kcci.com, and you will have those in by midnight Friday, or we won't even bother to look at them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there. And so if the NFL talks expansion, gee, do you think yeah. they're going to look at Los Angeles? Uh, Gosh. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks, Heidi. We'll be back with a look at stocks. That's our news for now. We'll be back again tonight at 10.